Well, I guess I've always had this um, this subtle seeking of um, of something more. There's always something more more meaningful than just chasing um, big houses and money and so forth. And I was always looking for a, a teacher that could take me there. And by we we met John in Bali, and I think from the time I met him, I knew that. Uh, uh, he had a lot to teach and coming to this course, this um, retreat, I think it's met every expectation, it's been perfect. If something tells you that there is something permanent, unchanging, still, calm, peaceful, never dying, eternal, never changing, and not only that, it tells you that you are that without having to do anything. <laughs> Would you believe it? Like many people, I'm one of those people who has done lots of retreats and workshops and trainings and read books and just been seeking. And I feel like when I met John and these teachings, it, really changed. Something clicked, something shifted, and it was, I think, really surprising how simple it all is. I was always looking for happiness somewhere, and I thought my partner had to make me happy, and um, external things had to make me happy, I had to be part of many things, to be, to be part of social activities, to be the best in my job, to be part of everything, and that's quite tiring. I really had not felt the happiness within myself and John's teachings began to give me the opportunity to explore what what this was. When I first started with John's teachings I thought oh no what have I done? Where do we want peace of mind? Sitting under a tree in the park or in the forest or in the traffic jam. Um, being able to really look at um, the identification with the thought and how I was able to um, very easily make that thought become way, way bigger than myself. Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroraha. What does it mean? Kill all your thoughts? <laughs> How do you kill all the thoughts? But now you think that. Then the thoughts don't matter. Then no longer bother you. If you know, please understand, if you know yourself as the stillness, as the eternal, as thought itself, the consciousness itself, in which all thoughts are coming, what thought is going to bother you? When we identify with what's happened, uh, if you've had a bad upbringing or it could be anything, a divorce, anything in our lives. I was always identifying with that past and then you become a victim to it. I don't need to do that anymore. It really helps me cope and move through life and shed things that for years have held these tight shoulders and kept them tight and and I, I find I can actually release so much more um, thinking about self-knowledge and really internalizing it into my life and dealing with situations with other people that I used to find very emotional, very difficult. Um, and I, I can actually step back from that, detach, and just sort of choose how I would like to respond to situations. And it's no fancy stuff. Okay, it doesn't require anything, you already know that before you take on the name, before you took on all the beliefs, before you took on all the ideas, already you were existing, were you or not? Yeah. Unconditioned. But what we've done is take the conditioning to be ourselves, taking the conditioning to be who we are. And this is where the practice of yoga becomes in so useful and so handy because it, what it does is tranquilize that for some time. The meditation tranquilizes that in so I can remember my true nature. 
So it really clicked for me when I actually started thinking about my roles that I play as a person and how I identify with my role so much, um, sometimes to my detriment and forget about the fact that I am unlimited. I really found out that I'm uh, much more than my body and my name. I think I've, I've gotten a little bit closer to myself. I understand that this is just a body to help us communicate uh, in the world, suddenly it's like a load has been lifted. Coming into the creation thing, this creation as I said earlier, already existing. We come into the creation, now see how it is. <laughs> we come in in this body, right? We don't even know that this, what is this body? It's a vehicle. It takes you from A to B. It's a body vehicle. It's got video, <laughs> audio. It's an incredible vehicle. I am much more peaceful with myself, and um, even when I get into moments where I'm stressed out or where everything's hectic around me, which of course it does here, um, I can just step back. I don't know how I do it, but I just get very calm. The one thing about John which I think has resonated for over time for me, where I, and I've really appreciated, is that he has a childlike curiosity that has been untainted by life. He gets it across very well. I mean, also for me, not being native English speaking, he. He gives such beautiful ex um, examples, which make it very easy to understand. Imagine the whole ocean is Coca-Cola. See what happens. If you take one drop of Coca-Cola out of the ocean of Coca-Cola, it doesn't change the nature. It doesn't change its nature, okay? But you can see it as an individual drop. Like you get cans of Coca-Cola, bottles of Coca-Cola, glasses of Coca-Cola, all different, but they're all Coca-Cola. So you have the individual soul, like a little drop. I'm just using Coca-Cola because we all know Coca-Cola. So now just take that drop of Coca-Cola and put it back in the ocean. Where does it go? Can you find that drop again? It just goes back into the ocean. But while it exists as a drop, of course, that individual, that the individual, the jiva in, in Sanskrit, obviously identifies completely with that and can't see anything other than that. And this is the re reason for all our suffering. It's, it's obvious that he's such a loving and caring person. So you feel very, you feel very comfortable and you feel very peaceful and at home with him. I had done previous trainings and have been studying yoga for um, several years but never really had the opportunity to um, look at myself in this way. The way John is able to articulate it has a particular uniqueness that I don't think you could find anywhere else in the world and yes I have done a lot of studies and work and I do take that study quite seriously. He seems to deliver it in a way that all the little bits and pieces that I've sort of gathered over the years puts it all together and it makes suddenly makes sense. I get the feedback very often that I look happy, that I look healthy and that I'm just joyful. That we are actually that which we seek. So why would we go searching when everything we need is actually who we are? If I had have come across these teachings years ago, um, it would have saved a, a lot of time over the last few years. I don't think I've ever had this opportunity to ask the question, who am I, in the way that I was able to. Once you understand yourself, everything is understood.